Hi, welcome to Food for Thought. My name is Colleen Patrick Goudreau from Compassionate Cooks. I founded Compassionate Cooks to empower people to make informed food choices and to debunk the myths about vegetarianism and animal rights. You can learn more about who we are and what we do by visiting our website, compassionatecooks.com. My perception of cow's milk, why we drink it, how it's produced, how the cows are treated, etc., is much different today than it was when I was growing up. And it's one of my hot button issues. I don't know if it's because I'm a woman, because I've seen men react this way too, but there's something really offensive about messing with an animal's reproductive system, a woman's reproductive system, manipulating it, exploiting it, using it, and basically throwing it away. Now, I didn't always see things this way because I used to believe, like many people, that cows just kind of gave milk and that there wasn't an ethical issue with taking it. It was as if we all believed that cows have an excessive amount of the stuff just hanging around in their udders, meant for human consumption. Like, we're almost taught to believe that we're doing them a favor by taking their milk. You know what I mean? I've even heard people say that they can understand not eating meat, but they just can't grasp not drinking cow's milk because it's such a natural product. And obviously, I I couldn't disagree more. There's nothing natural about artificially inseminating a female cow and taking away her baby so humans could drink her milk. It's just not natural. But how did we come to think of this stuff as being so natural? We all picture this idyllic image of cows naturally grazing and naturally giving her milk. Even the use of the word giving implies that she's offering it up to humans. It's very kind of them, don't you think? But of course, there are many reasons we we all believe this. There are the happy cow ads paid for by the dairy industry. These ads lead millions of people to believe that cows are just living it up in the land of milk and honey. Do you wonder if the cows and the bees actually coined that phrase? I don't think so. But the effect of these ads, though, is very powerful. It leads us to unquestioningly agree that drinking cow's milk is part of the natural order of things. And yet some people are still uncomfortable with a woman breastfeeding in public. No, no, there seems to be a little disparity there. And when I refer to these happy cow ads, I'm talking about ads that are shown in California. The ad goes something like milk comes from happy cows and happy cows come from California. I don't know what the dairy ads are like in other states. And most people don't know that California is the biggest producer of dairy in the country. But for those of you who live outside of California, these are deceptive ads showing dairy cows grazing on grassy knolls and rejoicing that their lot in life is to give their milk to unweaned humans. So considering the fact that most milk comes from California, this information is relevant for anybody, regardless of where you live, especially if you're drinking cow's milk or certainly consuming other cow's milk products. And I keep saying cow's milk, you notice, and I'm saying cow's milk not to to make a, well, I'm trying to make a point, but the point is that I need to differentiate cow's milk from other mammals' milk, right? I mean, I know that you know I'm talking about cow's milk, but the dairy industry has really usurped that word. Do you know that they even had a lawsuit against the soy milk companies to stop them from using the word milk? They wanted them to use the word beverage, saying that milk only refers to cow's milk. And I think that's really... um problematic because obviously they don't own that word. Milk has to do with the the mammary secretions of any mammal. That's goat's milk or human milk, cow's milk, cat's milk, rat's milk, whatever the animal is. So I'm saying cow's milk very specifically to refer to the stuff, this product that has been marketed by the dairy industry. Now, there are plenty of photos available that depict actual California dairies. Again, we're talking about the largest producer of dairy in the uh, country. And these photos reveal the blatant lies of these ads. And these ads, by the way, are created by the government-led Milk Advisory Board. And when a lawsuit was brought against this advisory board for false advertising, it was thrown out. The court ruled that the government is exempt from the state's false advertising laws. I'll just say that again. 
if you want to hear that to make sure you didn't hear it incorrectly, but the lawsuit against the milk advisory board for false advertising was thrown out because the court ruled that the government is exempt from the state's false advertising laws. The judge even acknowledged that if the ads had been made by a private individual, the false advertising laws may have, would have applied. And you can see the photo submitted in this lawsuit at uh, www, this is the website, unhappycows.com. And you can see the truth for yourself. You can judge for yourself. Another investigation by East Bay Animal Advocates also documents what the California dairies really look like through photographs. And their website is Inside Dairy Production. That's www.insidedairyproduction.com. And I know a lot of people are reluctant to look at what goes on in animal production, but look, folks, if we're supporting the stuff, we have to know what's going on. I can't think of a more selfish response than I don't want to know because it would be painful. And I understand it is painful, but our dollars are supporting the systematic abuse of animals. And it's only when we look at what we're supporting can, that we can call ourselves informed consumers because until then, we're simply not and we're just perpetuating cruelty through our, our money, through our dollars. And the photos that you'll see, uh, believe me, I've seen worse photos. I, I recommend take, checking these out. These aren't slaughter photos, so you can handle this, but they are photos of what these dairies actually look like. And you'll see things like cows not grazing on grass. They're sitting in mud. They're sitting on dirt. And in many of the photos, their udders are huge. I think it will shock you to see how large some of the cow's udders are. They're inflamed with something called mastitis, which is common in the dairy industry. It's an inflammation of the udders that's very painful for the cows. One image that you'll see is just of a tail on the ground because tail docking, which is basically cutting off the cow's tail, is common practice in the dairy industry. I'll get into more of that when we talk about the mutilations against animals' bodies, basically cutting off tails, cutting off beaks, you've heard of that, cutting off the toes of, of animals, cutting off um, parts of their ears. All these mutilations take place routinely in um, factory farming and organic farms as well. And, you know, you can refer to other podcasts I've made about the dairy industry and just about consuming cow's milk, where to get calcium, et cetera. But, you know, keep in mind that cows do not produce some magic formula for humans. That's not why they produce it. They give milk just like all female mammals do, which is, you know, for the purpose of nourishing their young Cows um, were wild animals once, and all cattle. They were domesticated for the purposes of human consumption, whether it was their flesh we were taking for meat or their milk we took for for drinking or uh, chickens, you know, that we started domesticating so we could take her eggs. Cattle are herd animals. Obviously, they're easy to contain because they move together and they stay together. In other words, cattle met certain requirements that made it easy for humans to control them. Okay, so what's my point? Let's not kid ourselves into believing that humans struck nutritional gold when they started drinking cow's milk. If hyenas were easy to control, we would have done the same thing to them. And did you know, in fact, hyena's milk has been found to be four times more nutritious than that of cow's milk? The calcium content is really high because they eat a lot of bones. So is the protein content. So, you know, my point is cow's milk is not mana from the heavens. It's a commercial product that has had billions of dollars behind it in advertising. And it's totally unnecessary. In fact, it's harmful for human survival and health. But if we could do the same thing to hyenas, if we could do the same thing to lions, we would have. So now there, you know, obviously other herd animals include goats, and sheep. And so now they're marketing goat's milk like it's some healthful product. And they're marketing sheep's milk like it's some healthful product. And yet people are grossed out by the very notion of even drinking human milk in, into adulthood. It doesn't make any sense. So anyway, that's just some information I wanted to give you. You know, ever since I learned how much animals suffer at the hands of humans, I wanted to do everything in my power to stop it. Maybe when you see these photos, you'll want to stop drinking cow's milk. And I can tell you that the easiest thing to do is to just not perpetuate this cruelty, you know, by just not purchasing it. And I 
joyfully stopped eating meat and dairy and eggs. There's no deprivation here, folks. This was a joyful, and it still is a joyful decision and, and, and lifestyle. Um, you know, as my understanding of the issue deepened, I experienced what I call an awakening regarding our exploitation of animals. And it's a lens through which I see the world now. And I didn't always see things this way. But it's a wonderful way to, to look at the world. And I have much more clarity about my role and my responsibility on this earth. It's really amazing how much influence we have in order to create the world that we imagine. So thank you for listening to Food for Thought. I hope you come back to hear more about this issue in particular and other issues re regarding animal rights and vegetarianism. One upcoming essay you might be interested in is how organic dairies are duping people into believing that their products are safer, healthier, and better for the animals. It's balderdash. And I'll leave you with one final thought on that note. Organic standards have nothing to do with animal welfare. Absolutely nothing. Organic has to do with the feed of the animals and what they're feeding them so remember drink your hyena milk it does a body good okay i'm kidding get your calcium from plants folks that's where the cows get it take care